Hello, happy Gandhi Jayanti to everybody who's listening, who's watching from Chef Amrita Raichand and me, Rishi K. How are you? Very well, thank you. We want to dedicate this entire episode to uh, the father of our nation. And I remember reading my experiments with truth, which is Gandhiji's autobiography. My father bought it for me when I was in my eighth standard. Wow. And I was just so taken in by that uh, particular autobiography. It still remains one of my favorite books and I try and read it every few years, you know. It just shows you that nobody is born great. Yes. Everybody has to work at it. Everybody has so many trials and tribulations and, you know, ill habits that one has to get over. And I, I love the fact that today we'll also be talking about Gandhiji's choice of food. Yes. <laughs> After all, it is beyond the plate and we are going to talk about him as a freedom fighter. But we got it right. We're going to talk a lot about his food habits as well. So, uh, did you know? I have a couple of things to ask you actually sure. today. Sure. It's going to be a little GK test for you. Did, do you know that 2nd October, Gandhi Jayanti is one of the only three national holidays? Yeah. Easy question. Easy question? Yeah. What are the other Independence two? Independence Day Republic Day. But what are the other holidays we have in India? We have so many yeah, holidays. Yeah, we have lots of them. Yes. So, how come they are not national holidays? Tricky they are. question. Yes. Yeah. I don't know why. They are not national holidays, they are public holidays. Public holidays. But these three are the only three national holidays that are celebrated in our country. Yeah, I think I buy that because we are a secular country. So if we were to make religious holidays, national holidays as opposed to public holidays, right. we'd see as being secular. Absolutely. So I think that's a great thing by the, the architects of our nation. Absolutely. Now also what's a matter of great pride for India is that in 2007, the UN General Assembly adopted a resolution which declared 2nd October as International Day of Nonviolence. Wonderful. Hmm. And now you had spoken about him being the father of the nation. Again, second GK question. Do you know who gave him that name? I think Nehruji. No. Nope. Because Nehruji used to call him Bapu, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. So he called no? him Bapu, okay. but this name was given by another legend of our country, none other than Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose. That's quite remarkable because mm. I do know that Netaji and Bapu had differences of opinion on a lot of things. Right. For example, the formation of the Indian National Army <clears> at the <throat> time, uh, Bapu's method was more non-violence. Yes. Whereas uh, the great Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose, also a wonderful patriot, also a great freedom fighter, felt that use of force had to happen on certain places and occasions. True. So great. That means they had so much mutual respect. I love that. Yeah. When people can have mutual respect but agree to disagree on certain things. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. because I mean, after all, Bapu's relentless struggles for independence did definitely deserve that name. And mm. uh, Netaji appreciated and respected that and honored him for it. Now, let's come back to the food that we were talking about. Do you know that Gandhiji's diet and eating habits influenced a lot of his political struggles as well? Believe it or not, his eating habits were way ahead of its time. Now, today, what we talk about, you know, all the popular theories of intermittent fasting, veganism, preference for whole grains and raw fruit, these were all the practices followed by Gandhiji back then. Interesting, isn't it? Very interesting. In fact, in, in the, uh, the autobiography, Experiments with Truth, he talks about how he was a non-vegetarian. Yes. And then he, he converted to vegetarian. Yes, it's a, there's mm. actually a very sweet story about it, which I'm going to talk about, uh, because he actually believed that eating meat makes people stronger. So during his quest to fight the British Raj, he considered becoming a non-vegetarian. And uh, one day when his Gujarati family was sleeping, he went by the river to try and eat meat. He came back, tried to sleep, but he was haunted by nightmares and he literally jumped out of his sleep. And as we all know, uh, therefore, his meat eating days didn't last uh, long at all. And he went back to becoming a, being a vegetarian. Soon after, he left for England for his legal studies. And like uh, most Indian mothers, uh, let alone Gujarati mothers, <laughs> Gandhiji's mother also made him uh, promise that he will not touch wine, women or meat. Uh, and this was actually a turning point in his life and it was only in London that he embraced ethical reasons to not eat meat. In this process, he also went to find his first political cause, vegetarianism. 
As a member of the London Vegetarian Society, Gandhiji overcame his fear of public speaking and became for the first time an activist championing his first cause. He learned to link his vegetarianism to a series of radical causes and to an expansive concept of non-violence. You know, it's like in the modern day, there are so many of experts who link, who talk about mind, body, soul alignment, who talk about how your mental frame of mind is fueled by what you eat, yes. you know. For example, if you eat something which is uh, greatly uh, loaded with chili, mm. your, yeah, yeah. Heat, your mental framework becomes a particular way. So, yes. yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's fantastic that I'm sure that uh, leaning towards vegetarianism gave him the required calm and patience to sort the world's problems, if not the world's problem, at least India's problems. Yes, and you know, uh, Rishi, on that note, to each uh, their own, there there is this whole thought of sattvic food, tamasic food, and we're going to talk about that as well. But it's also about how one relates to it. Now, for Gandhiji, he related to vegetarianism as something which was sattvic. It's not to say that people who are, you know, who eat non-vegetarian food do not have sattvic thoughts or they cannot be sattvic. There are many other things that go into creating a diet which, like you very rightly said, connects your mind, your soul and your body together. So, in fact, we must do an episode on, on this topic as well. It's it's a good one that we've touched today. Uh, coming back to his uh, so many different causes that Gandhiji was a part of, his most radical non-violent, food-connected and world-famous agitation will have to be the salt march, as you'll agree with yeah, me, the yeah. Dandi march in 1930. He just couldn't believe that salt, which is so necessary for human existence, should be taxed. Yes, and, you know, and it was a very unfair taxation. Yeah. But I have a question for you. I mean, one is vegetarianism, the other is veganism. Mm. I know that vegans don't even touch cow's milk or, or goat's milk. Yes. What did Gandhiji veer towards? Can you believe it? He also veered towards veganism. But being a Gujarati, as you can tell, giving up milk is very, very difficult. So he actually went on to create homemade almond milk at home. But uh, unfortunately, it didn't probably suit his digestive system and he, it didn't quite uh, prove satisfying to him. So for the first time, he actually did something un-Gandhian, if I may call that. He revised his vow and decided that his vow did not include goat's milk. So he wow. consumed goat's milk to satisfy his need for milk. Um, Looks like uh, <laughs> along with lots of experiments with truth, he also had experiments with food. Yes, indeed. So I, I want to ask you a, a vital question. I mean, what is his view about raw food vis-a-vis -vis cooked food? Yeah. If you could enlighten us on that. Yeah. Sure. And, uh, you know, a very nice thing that you just said, that there was there's a lot to learn from him. Uh, not only his entire attitude towards how he handled the freedom, uh, you know, the fight for freedom, but also how he handled the fight for nourishment in his own body, how he kept himself fit and his mind calm with his eating habits. Uh, now, he actually believed that raw and uncooked food uh, is much better and actually a uh, you know, he called it vital food because he felt that, uh, first of all, I think it kind of agreed with, with his uh, idea of simplicity. And secondly, he also realized at that time that when you cook food, there are a lot of nutrients that do get lost. And, mm. you know, it is, it is a fact to a great extent. What is interesting to note is that his love for raw and wild greens also arose from a hope that India's rural poor could find sustainable and affordable sources of nutrition. So you see how... Everything is interconnected for his nation. No wonder father of nation was the name given to him. Amrita, what do you think today all Indians, all of us who are listening to this program can learn from Gandhiji's diet? If is I, there a particular terminology or a philosophy that we can pick up from the diet? Absolutely. And to my mind, it's discipline, discipline, discipline. Because <laughs> that is a policy, whether it's food, it's the way you live life. I feel that is key to life and that is the biggest thing that comes out of all the learnings that uh, that we get from Gandhiji's way of living uh, and the way of eating. He, um, you know, I'm now going to just break it down on and come right to food. The little, little theories that he uh, propagated in his time are so interesting to note because today's nutritionists actually will charge you an arm and a leg to give the same theories that was propagated by him 
really uh, years ago. He believed that grains and pulses need to be consumed in small quantities and also without much polishing and refining. He advocated more of fresh and locally produced fruits and vegetables. He recommended low salt and sugar in food and he as the choice of fats when you're cooking. I mean, uh, you know, isn't this what we hear about every day today? Yeah. So now we know the food groups that Gandhiji loved. Let's get into individual items. Using those food groups, what is the food that he liked to consume? Individual dishes. What would be the ideal menu for Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, let's say, for a, for a lunch that he was having in his ashram? So like we already discussed, he had a very sattvic way of approaching food. You know, Ayurveda actually says the same thing that he propagated and he liked everything uh, in the most raw form, at the most little boiled, not with too much masalas. He loved his rice and dal, again, unpolished. He loved his chapati, which had more of, uh, you know, fibers. So he also loved his uh, millet-made uh, chapatis. He loved uh, brinjal, believe it or not. And his favorite vegetable was loki. Uh, he obviously knew that Loki is full of nutrients. Uh, so again, uh, made in a very simple way. Uh, I think if today I had to create a menu for him, I would make him khichdi. I would uh, you add a couple of uh, uh, chapatis with a little ghee on it. And I would make a nice boiled uh, uh, brinjal. And I would make him um, Loki Lajavab, which actually is also today's recipe of the week. Fantastic. That time of the show when I give you essentials. The Ask Amrita section comes at the end of the show. Please ask any questions you want. All questions are taken up and answered. This could be about diet, nutrition. Today it could be about uh, Bapu, about Gandhi. Happy Gandhi Gandhi to everybody who's just tuned in. 9833-943-943 is where you can ask your question. Remember also to WhatsApp your name along with your question. 9833-943-943. Also, the recipe of the day is filmed in uh, Amrita's spanking new kitchen studio which you really have to check out and it is available in video form at 94.3 radio 1 india and also at amrita raichan those two instagram handles what she does is she also does a larger version of the recipe of the day which she puts on her youtube channel which again makes for very very interesting uh, uh, viewing chef and beyond right yes yeah. amrita raichan chef amrita and raichan beyond. chef and beyond that's what that youtube channel is as far as uh, listening essentials are concerned, we come to you every Monday, 8.15 to 9 a.m. on 94.3 Radio 1 in audio form. And on Wednesday, we're on the Radio 1 International YouTube channel. The entire episode comes to you. So, let's move further. The recipe of the week on Gandhi Jayanti, it is, like Amrita said, Gandhiji's favorite, Loki or bottle gourd in English. Yes. And uh, it's called Loki Lajwab. Of course, you can give it any name that you like. But I also like to add uh, wonderful names to dishes that I create because I think along with presentation, the name of a dish also kind of tickles the senses sure. uh, and makes the food even more attractive. So this is a very simple recipe. We've all eaten Loki uh, at home in the form of sabzi. Uh, I thought, why not turn it into a, uh, you can call it a snack or an appetizer. So what I do is I cut the bottle gourd in uh, you know thick slices round thick slices and with a little bit of salt and turmeric uh, I, uh, I grill it on a, in a pan with a little bit of ghee or oil then I move it on the side in the same pan I add a little more ghee I add some jeera I add uh, you can add some mustard seeds or curry leaves as well uh, if you want to make it uh, even more sumptuous but I'm sticking to Gandhiji's uh, need for simplicity so I'm just sticking to cumin seeds here then I add some onions some tomatoes uh, cook it out and I add some peanuts and then once I cook it together I use this filling to top up the grilled um, uh, loki slices. Then I, of course, garnish it with a little bit of dhania, coriander leaves, and there you go. Loki lajwab is ready. <laughs> you know, it's remarkable, Abrita, how many gastroenterologists take it from a guy who goes and binges at restaurants and wakes up the next day with an odd stomach. <laughs> so gastros are one of my most go-to kind of people. Okay. How the gastros will say... Here's your medicine, but also detox. Have lots of Loki. Yes, the Kitchri is always there. Yes. But, you know, have lots of Loki. So, Gandhiji, way ahead of his time, and that's why he is the father of our nation. The Ask Amrita uh, section. 
Today it's Deval Desai. Are beans and legumes helpful in detoxification and cleansing of the body, Amrita? Okay, so Deval, this is a very interesting question and I'd like to break it into two parts. Uh, you must have heard of Dan Butner who has spent years researching blue zone states, which actually means states where people live the longest. Uh, he states that beans including fava, black soy and lentils are the cornerstone of most centenarian diets, which means uh, diets which include mostly unprocessed foods. But would I say that it helps in cleaning? No, they help in gaining muscle, they are very strong, uh, uh, you know, additive to your diet because it makes you strong, it makes you build. But it also is full of fiber, which is good for your gut, which is good for your stomach. But if you only have this to uh, detoxify or cleanse, uh, I would not take that route. When you want to cleanse your system, you should have lighter foods. You should have fruits and vegetables, mostly in raw form. Uh, you know, stick to a liquid diet because that really helps in cleansing the gut. But when you're having uh, legumes uh, like this, use them to make yourself uh, stronger and to build your muscles. Ask Amrita is at 9833943943. Start uh, uh, getting underway with all your questions for next week, right here and now. Don't say I didn't warn you, along with your name, of course. We will see you back Monday, 8.15 a.m. on the radio. And thank you for this really insightful episode. I'm going to try and reach for some locky juice. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Rishi. Thank you for having me here. It's always such a pleasure chatting with you. 94.3 Radio 1.